How do you solve a problem like Mulvaney? All right, mate, it's Madigan, Dylan Mulvaney. Now, there's a name you may have heard of, or maybe you haven't heard of. Let me give you a 30,000-foot view of who is Dylan Mulvaney. Now, a little over a year ago, Dylan Mulvaney started a very popular thread on his TikTok account called Days of Girlhood, where he chronologically documented his transition into becoming a woman. And it gave him everything that this guy has been just desperate for, more or less his entire life, which is attention, your attention, our attention, this attention right here. And it's worked out brilliantly for Dylan. Dylan has managed to get himself an audience at the White House with Joe Biden. But something has happened more recently other than his audience with Joe Biden. On the 1st of April, which everyone assumed was a was an April Fool's prank, uh, the beer in the United States, Bud Light, uh, announced that Dylan was now a face of their campaign, which we can see right here. I kept hearing about this thing called March Madness, and I thought we were all just having a hectic month, but it turns out it has something to do with sports. And I'm not sure exactly which sport, but either way, it's a cause to celebrate. This month, I celebrated my day 365 of womanhood, and Bud Light sent me possibly the best gift ever, a can with my face on it. Check out my Instagram story to see how you can enjoy March Madness with Bud Light and maybe win some money too. Love ya! So, again, everyone thought this was a joke. But it wasn't a joke because Bud Light did come out and say, yeah, uh, this is legit. Dylan is now part of our... Uh, of our brand, and we'll be endorsing the product. Now, everyone had a response to that. Some people loved it. A lot of people hated it. I bet you can guess on which side of the aisles the love and the hate was. So the right has gone off their ch chop and said, that's it, no more Bud Light. Uh, a very prominent uh, country music star said, as far as I'm now touring, uh, no beer that the company that owns Bud Light will be on my uh, on my tour or on my riders, et cetera, et cetera. A lot of people are buying it up in support of Dylan. Everything's a little bit crazy, but the thing that I just cannot understand is that why people are buying into this. This is exactly what this guy wants, Dylan. He is just so keen for your attention. And again, I realize that I'm contributing to this problem, which is driving me nuts. Uh, Bud Light wasn't the only brand that has taken on Dylan, it also came to light that Nike is now uh, paying Dylan. Does this inspire you women, girls? Does that inspire you to uh, buy Nike gear? It might, I mean, you're actually the biggest contributor to this issue that suddenly all of your jobs are now disappearing. Uh, apparently not only Nike, but Tampax as well. Think about this one. A trans woman is now a brand ambassador for Tampax, the female hygiene product. That about the prospect of me doing a tampon partnership. I mean, it made the news. And then the tampon brands, they got real quiet. Um, and that's okay. Today, I'm going to go hand out all of these extra tampons I have left. So, again, this is just, this is playing into Dylan's wheelhouse uh, that what he's really after here is just attention. And like I said, it's worked out brilliantly for him. Now, why do I say that he is just keen on all this attention? Well, you just got to look back on his previous social media postings and what this guy has been trying to do is that he's been trying to grab your attention for the better part of a decade now. We've seen this footage come out of him on The Price is Right. Yes, you got it. Dylan's a winner. Dylan's a winner. Dylan, nice job, man. Look at that. Uh, we're going to spin the wheel right after this. Don't go away, folks.
that right there is your classic attention whore behavior. And it wasn't just on The Price is Right, but Dylan made an appearance uh, as an audience member who got up and danced for Ellen. Let's have a look. I, I, I can't honestly watch any more of that. But it, it's basically right there. This person is a classic narcissist uh, to an extreme level. And this is exactly what, like, he's tried everything. He, as he said, he, he tried musical theatre. He was in um, the Book of Mormon. Everything that this guy has been trying to do was to get fame and attention. And uh, I think if you go back and look through his TikTok and all that sort of stuff, that he had a bit of a meltdown uh, during the pandemic because everything was shut down and he couldn't do anything. He couldn't get the attention that he was after. And then it clicked. What's popular right now? Oh, yes, transing. That's popular. And this is what he's done. And he's grabbed and he's fooled everyone. He's fooled all these brands. But the question is, why are the brands doing this? Well, we found out why that the lead marketer of Bud Light decided to do this stuff. Well, I'm a businesswoman. Mm -hmm. I had a really clear job to do when yeah. I took over Bud Light. And it was, this brand is in decline. It's been in decline for a really long time. And if we do not attract young drinkers to come and drink this brand, there will be no future for Bud Light. So I had this super clear mandate. It's like, we mm -hmm. need to evolve and elevate this incredibly iconic brand. And my, what I brought to that was a belief in, okay, what, is, what, do, what does evolve and elevate mean? It means inclusivity. It means shifting the tone. It means having a campaign that's truly inclusive and feels lighter and brighter and different and appeals to women and to men mm -hmm. and representation is at sort of the heart of evolution you've got to see people who reflect you in the work and we had this hangover i mean bud light had been kind of a brand of fratty kind of out of touch humor and it was really important <laughs> that we had another approach so there it is right there did you hear that? That very key word that she used there was inclusivity, which is just a buzzword. It's a virtue signal to cater to basically a cult, a cult of a very, very small but vocal and violent minority that they're now pushing towards. And it's, and it's not just this bud beer. The majority of the companies that you know right now, they're all doing this. They're all doing it because they're afraid. They need to send up the virtue signal. They need to shine the, the rainbow flag in the sky like the bat signal to say, look, please don't come for us. Why are they so scared? Why are they catering to this tiny, vocal and violent minority that absolutely hates them? Because they're scared. They're, they're, they don't care about me sitting here whinging or the fact that I'm never going to drink Bud Light again. They, they could not give a crap. I mean, at the end of the day, when, they're, when their sales fall through the floor, they might reconsider, but they might double down because Nike doubled down on their Instagram account after it was announced that they teamed up with uh, Dylan. They said, be more inclusive. They do not care. They didn't care after they sat there and they supported the American hating, uh, what's his name, Colin Kaepernick. They don't care. So why are they doing this? Well, we might have a little bit of an insight. Inside the CEI system pushing brands to endorse celebs like Dylan Mulvaney. Executives at companies like Nike and Hauser Busch and Kate Spade, whose brand endorsements have turned to controversial trans deal, uh, influencer Dylan Mulvaney in today's woke it girl, aren't just virtue signaling. They're handing out lucrative deals to, uh, to what were once considered fringe celebrities because they have to or risk failing an all-important social credit score that could make or break their business. At stake is their Corporate Equity Index, or CEI score, which is overseen by the Human Rights Campaign, the largest LGBTQ plus political lobbying group in the world. 
HRC, which has received millions from George Soros Open Society Foundation, among others, issues report cards for America's biggest corporations via the CEI, awarding or subtracting points for how well companies adhere to what HRC calls its rating criteria. There it is. Your money doesn't matter at all. They're getting money from, uh, from, from, mil- from billionaires. They don't care. But eventually the money's going to run out. So how do we fight this? Well, you do have to fight with your wallet. You have to find these companies that do not hate you. And it's, and it's really, really hard. In America, there's nothing here for us in Australia, but there's an app called Public Square, which I uh, highly recommend that you get your hands on because it will show you companies that uh, adopt freedom, uh, freedom mentality into their, into their production. And they're not bought out by companies that are funded by the, uh, sorry, that are funded by the Open Society Foundation. These people do not care that, you, uh, that you're upset by this sort of stuff. They'll just keep getting the money from these billionaires. And why do they keep going after pe- people like Dylan? Because they know it gets them the attention. They know that this, is, this has been all over Twitter and all over social media and all over the news and it's getting them exactly what they want because then they can go to this HRC company and say, look, Look what we've done. Look at all the attention we brought our brand. Yeah, we're going to need a little bit more money because uh, no one is buying our beer anymore. So you d- you just need to keep you need to keep coming up with the with the money. It amazes me that uh, that that people are uh, they're actually supporting this and and especially women. What what is the what was the saying? That the greatest trick the devil, that the greatest trick the devil ever pulled was to convince the world he didn't exist. And now the greatest trick that the misogynists have ever pulled was to convince women to let them take over. And you're allowing it with open arms, because you all want to put up your hands and and let everyone know. Look how inclusive we are. And you're losing all your spots and all your brand endorsements and all your jobs and all your Women of the Year awards and all your sports awards simply because you want to be seen as inclusive. We can't help you. I've said this before. You told us, us men, ages ago, to shut up about women's topics. You admonished us. We tried to warn you of this. And you told us to F off. So we can't help you. It's up to you now, isn't it? All right, mate, thanks very much for checking out the video. Thanks very much for checking out my channel. Please let me know in the comments below if I'm wrong about this. I'd love to see your comments or maybe you agree. Either way, I would love for you to leave a comment. Don't forget you can find me just by searching out the Brian Madigan. I'm on all those platforms listed there. Leave a like, leave a comment. If you're listening to the audio-only versions, I would love a five-star review as well. Are we done? Yeah, we're done. (laughs) 